Welcome to 3ds Max news for the month of September 2024, a lot of cool stuff this month, let's just start with FumeFX that they released version 6.5 and they are introducing a GPU accelerated PVD solver to simulate all types of liquids inside 3ds Max. Ideal to simulate a, a small scale liquids, it's very stable and fast as you can see, close to real time and because it's physics based can interact with other physics objects, so you can interact with uh, rigid bodies, with kinematic bodies, uh, two-way interaction, pretty cool stuff. They also created a lot of other nodes to support more functionality with this new PVD solver. You can mesh stuff and different things. And also they add support for 3ds Max 2025 with this release. Mario Silahi released Trifill Pro for 3ds Max. A new modifier that will smoothly fill any shape hole with triangles. Uh, but also it's blending it very nicely as you can see with the rest of the mesh. It takes into account the polygon density so it will blend even the same object has different resolutions on different areas. It really works like magic and this tool, tool costs $48. Shirzad Barami released a tool to customize your coding environment in 3ds Max. You can customize Python and Max Scripts UIs and preview how this will look inside 3ds Max even without running 3ds Max. It's uh, working independently. You can change the color of everything in a script editor, save and load different themes that you can create, and a personal license costs 19 pounds. He also has different free tools that he adds support for Max 2025. One is AnimRef, it's a sequence previewer, a cat.rot node for making exportable rigs for game engines from cat, and the other is Posture to save and load poses for 3ds Max. Special mention this month at a stack, the 3ds Max group in Facebook reached a huge milestone, reaching over 10,000 members for the first time. A lot of those members come thanks to a post by Alex Nice that we will see uh, on the 3ds Max is only for Archbeth section, amazing content this month, so stay until the end. And we need to talk about a success story about collaboration with a happy ending. All I start on my Discord channel, where my patrons has exclusive access to it, uh, Viper asked for a problem that he had with low viewport performance in 3ds Max 2025 and then between Viper and Alida they figured out that, that something was wrong since Max 2024 was uh, able to display the viewport way faster. So they went to a stack to gather information from other 3ds Max users and on a stack within the same day Joseph when Reuther, he figured out that enabling hardware heat testing on viewport was speeding insanely the, the same machine. And during the same day, Logan Foster and the QA team at 3ds Max, they localized the problem that apparently was introduced in Max 2025.2 on the later release, and it will be fixed on the next Max release. But in, me in the meantime, Chang So Eun also created a free script to toggle the GPU heat on or off, that it's an option that is only accessible via Max script that solves temporarily this problem until there is this official Max fix uh, that will come on the next update. So a very happy ending, solving a problem within a day thanks to the 3ds Max community. Pretty a success story, if you ask me. Norberto Aguilera shared a page that he found where you can upload a video and using AI, it will convert this video into an FPX or a 3ds Max biped file. And he showcased some examples that he tried, and this looks very promising. Hamid Memar shared for free a very cool 3ds Max scene that he did for his work Chaotic Out Loud, where you can see a Corvette, Grand Sport, and a police car on a chasing scene. The render is set up with V-Ray, and you can see a very cool breakdown of his work on Art Station. To get this scene, you just need to join for free his Patreon. And Typhlo got a new update, and it's quite important. This time it's allowing full max script access to create or modify any type of event or operator allowing to be deeper integrated in any pipeline. 
So, also a lot more options to acquire material like this when using the Boolean operators inside Typeflow and other fixes and stuff. But the important thing is that now we have full Max script access to everything in, in Typeflow. And as always, I cover this new update in Typeflow in deep with examples on my Patreon. So my Patreons has, have access to all these tutorials. This month, also, I answered the question of one Patreon about how to recreate a MoGraph effect. And I am doing it using only the ring modifier and the old school cloth modifier that, for examples like this one that you can see here, it's super flexible and it's very powerful. And we go over how to add variation over crowds using type props and three more tutorials over the Rhinoceros course that I am doing about ground interaction. So a lot of fun on Patreon, guys. Chaos Group presented Project Arena, a solution to integrate V-Ray assets to be consumed in real time over virtual production. No needing to digest, simplify or do any type of preparation of the asset before going into the virtual production environment. They created a shot called Ray Tracing for the win, that they used to showcase how Project Arena, V-Ray and Vantage play together to create faster decisions during, film, during filming. And yeah, very fun uh, short film, high quality, that you can check on YouTube. Very cool tutorials this month. Victor Burman created a very complete tutorial about creating a condensation effect in Typeflow, 40 minutes of tutorial with really great reference and examples in how to achieve this, uh, the wonder realism. Really great tutorial and result, highly recommended. Changso keeps delivering quality tutorials on the Autodesk Learning Channel with not one but two tutorials covering advanced techniques using the powerful array modifier, creating chains, a complex good floor pattern with color and texture randomization using the array and OSDL, and cloth seams following a curve. Uh, pretty cool stuff, a lot of interesting techniques there. Kingdom Crafter created also a very complete tutorial in how to create procedural sci-fi hallways patterns using 3ds Max, getting into creating walls, tubes, and rendering all together with V-Ray. And Norberto Aguilera did a fantastic 15 minutes tutorial about animating and rigging a sci-fi creature. He published the first video so far explaining how to do it using 3ds Max, Biped and Workbench. And 3ds Max is only for RGB where we talk about things created by users that are not <laughs> RGB. And this month, I don't know, every month I think it's the best of the year, but one more time, this month is super strong. J.A. Duran already worked on the title sequence for the Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power for Season 1, and now he worked on the title sequence for Season 2. All simulations done in Typeflow in 3ds Max, obviously, and rendered in Redshift inside 3ds Max. For this season, they was looking for a more viscous and cohesive movement of the of the soil, and to do this, he worked with physics binds inside Typeflow. He says that the biggest challenge was to manage the huge amount of physics particles, because as you can see, there's a lot, and he solved this with multiple tight caches and splitting the simulations in multiple tight caches that he composed later on. Amazing video one more time, and we're waiting for a making of that I remember that he did one for the season one, will be cool to see the same for season 2. Amazing stuff. Alex Nice is a concept illustrator working on the film industry. He worked with the director Fede Alvarez to help design the mood and aesthetic for the new movie Alien Romulus. Alex is a fan of 3ds Max and here is his quote that 3ds Max is the absolute best design tool in my opinion. I have been using this amazing piece of software for 20 years, I have used them all, and it saddens me to see people disparaging this incredible software that I have built a career of. Um, he also mentioned that the director of Alien Romulus, Fede Alvarez, was a very skilled 3ds Max user, and that during the creation of these concepts, they will be sharing Max files back and forth with the director to add and 
uh, change concepts directly in 3 Max. And this post killed it in a stack with more than 5,000 reactions and more than 400 shares. So if you didn't give it a like yet, go to a stack group, give it a like because yeah, pretty cool stuff to see so many people reacting to one post. And let's see more incredible things on Infinity's Max now from Lucas Piacini. He created this jungle as a graduation environment, but he keep working on it and he used 3 Max, V-Ray and a Speed Tree, and for the first time he used a little of Houdini. The results are incredible and the making of is equally impressive, showcasing a lot of the techniques that he used in 3 Max. We can see for example that close-up li uh, lianas, I think it's called, uh, he used the powerful stack modifier for procedural control that is very customizable and he can tweak it uh, randomly one by one but also he created another more procedural setup using type flow to create the same uh, but i guess for the background and to create not having to create one by one and huge amount of tips and tricks about material creation modeling techniques and lighting tricks that he used on this shot check it out on arta station because there's a lot of information on this making of jonah neukirk Render the full official video for Till Linderman song Uber's Mirror in 3ds Max. They used V-Ray and Arnold to render this project, and this video is close to 1 million views in just a few days. So, pretty cool stuff. Aliresa Akbari keeps working on his Warcraft uh, 3 characters now with a new character version that you can see here pretty amazing stuff and a running monster using ZBrush animated in 3 ds Max and Typeflow for all the CFX um, we keep seeing a little of work in progress every month and yeah, I hope to see the final project because this is looking very very good and talking about World of Warcraft, Blizzard created an art station page showcasing the artwork from all the different artists involved on the new expansion that is called The War Within. And we know that 3 ds Max is heavily used in Blizzard Entertainment Studios, as we can see different artists showcasing his work in the game, and you can check that they are using Lee effectively for modeling 3 ds Max. Ralph Suter, first sculpt Wolverine, uh, I think that using ZBrush and then rendering substance with modeling in 3 ds Max. Very cool character that then he after ported to Unreal Engine. He even managed to export the hair and fur from 3 ds Max as a groom inside Unreal. And he used Cat in 3 ds Max to rig him and using the Unreal game's animation samples uh, to create a bridge with live IK retargeting and adding some morph in top of it and you can see how it looks in Unreal Engine, pretty cool things. From Malverse Animation, always showcasing that biped can be used for much more things than bipeds, here a very cool tiger using biped and yeah, looking all the animals from Malverse Animation looking very good. Simon Wright Posting in Typeflow Group in Facebook very cool logo animations using Time Multifracture heavily to do very cool looking distractions. Type Multifracture is now my favorite tool on the arsenal of tools that is now becoming Typeflow. We don't have enough animations done with it, I think. And yeah, here a pretty cool example of all the detail uh, that you can create with it. One thing that amazed me of Time Multifracture that it's CUDA based, it's how fast it is, it never fails and you can get a lot of cool detail with it. And let's finish this section by Jonas Noel and his entry for the challenge Kinetic Rush that is hosted by Punisher, like every year there is like a new entry with a lot of people uh, participating on this con contest and you can see always very cool stuff. 
you start with a base animation on layout and can add it top whatever you want. In this case, Jonas went for a zombie uh, chase. And the breakdown is very cool, as you can see how the shot keeps improving over time, with some tie flow simulations for the rain and a very cool final animation. And that's all for this month, guys. Thank you so much to all my patrons that helped me doing these videos. Without them, these videos would not be possible. And if you like it, remember to give a like, give a comment, share it with your friends, subscribe, and all these things. Thank you so much, and see you soon. Bye.